Guys, welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. This is going to be part two from Steve Chappell on elk calling tips. And I want to remind you guys that you can go on Chappell Guide Service. That's C-H-A-P-P-E-L-L guideservice.com. And you can order uh, any of these calls that you hear on these demonstrations, as well as you can check out Steve's Extreme Bulls 1 through 8 video series. Uh, and also check out his website for uh, guiding in Arizona. I want to thank Steve for his participation and allowing me to play this audio. I think there's just some valuable uh, tips here, and and, uh, he is an incredible caller. Also encourage you guys to check out his YouTube channel, uh, which you can also link right off of his website, chapelguideservice.com. Another great tip here, guys. Thanks for your support. Let's get right to it. (laughs) <laughs> All right, let's do it. So, Steve, you're really famous for your elk hunting, and I know that a big part of that for you over the years has been calling. I want to talk to you a little bit today about a little bit today about the calling that you've done, and maybe just how you got started in it. Yeah, I mean, I love to call. It it pretty much defines me as as a hunter. Um, you know, really, I got started in calling in in the late '80s, watching Wayne Carlton who's still around today and, you know, basically is is a legend, him, Will Primos, guys like that. Um, So they motivated me to learn calling by watching their videos. And I still remember the very first mouth diaphragm that I purchased, or elk call, period, that I purchased was a Larry D. Jones mouth read. And although it was a great call, I was a very inexperienced caller. I'd never blown a call before, and I would not say by any stretch that I was a natural at it. Um... I can still recall practicing and practicing, and the hardest thing for me that I struggled with was just getting a sound, a, any type of sound out of that call. And it was just because I didn't have an approach to it. I didn't know, um, you know how to go about getting a sound out of it. Um, but you know, in the 20 or so years that has transpired since then, um, you know, what I've learned and what I teach now to people is, is with these mouth diaphragms and... These, um, I've got three different mouth diaphragms here, and these are my um, signature series calls that are manufactured by Bugling Bull Game Calls. I teamed up with Rocky Jacobson, who's a world champion elk caller, to produce these, and, and I'm thrilled with the results on them. But uh, anyway, back to getting a sound out of a diaphragm, um, you're just basically going to place this, this reed with the horseshoe part of it facing out, okay? Um, this is a pallet plate, which was which was designed and patented by Rocky Jacobson, who manufactures these calls for me. Um, that's going to face up in the top of your mouth. Now, a lot of people will put this call up in the middle top of their mouth. I found that by putting it in the top of my mouth, but more toward the front, behind my front teeth, it gives me less of a gag reflex because people have that problem with this call in their mouth, that's the hardest thing to initially overcome is not wanting to gag on it. Okay? So by doing that, putting it in my mouth, getting comfortable with it being in my mouth to start with, and you want to get it damp because with it dry, it won't make a sound. Once I've done that and I place my tongue just right in the middle or you can do it in the middle or more toward the front of the reed of the call, this is the latex part of it, You're just going to bring air up from your stomach, and with your tongue against the reed, trapping that air, it's going to sound like this without a call in my mouth. Like that. If I put the call in my mouth and do the same thing, I get... Okay? That's very close to the elk tone right there. And to get the cow sound, all I'm doing is... I'm starting out with a little more tongue pressure on, on the reed to get that high note and to get the second part of the cow call, which is a little lower note, I'm just taking a little more pressure off with my tongue and I'm getting that second note and I'm sliding it from that high note to that lower note like this. Okay, And that's just by varying my tongue pressure, harder at the beginning, less less at the end. Now this is my... Close a reed. Go ahead. Are you, are you pushing up against that reed with your tongue? Yes. Are you pushing with your tongue when you say tongue pressure? Where is the pressure? Yes, I'm putting, I'm putting my tongue right in the, the center or toward the front. I, I typically, for lower sounds, I'll put it more in the center of the latex, and for the higher sounds, I put out more out toward the front of the latex, toward the end of the latex, like that. 
This, this call I was using, I actually prefer, to be honest with you, for bugling. So let me get out this. This is the orange reed, the estrus excited reed um, that, that we make that I prefer for cow calling. It's a single reed call versus a double reed call like this closer. A little easier to blow. Again, just by using that medium or that, that higher tongue pressure to medium tongue pressure, I'm getting that high note to a lower note. Like this. And I can blow it with a lot of volume. I can blow it very quietly. I can affect the tone by whether I have my mouth open versus kind of shut versus shut. I'm just bringing, actually bringing more air up from my stomach, and I'm putting a little more tongue pressure on the reed. So that in, those two things in combination are giving me more volume and a higher tone. Yes. Um, and, you know, someone would ask, well, when would you use various calls? Um, you know, a lot of that just comes from being out in the woods and being around these elk and picking up on their intensity level and their emotion and what stage they're in. I try to really match that intensity and that emotion. And, and to be honest with you, though, nine times out of ten, I found that the more emotion that I put into the call, the more personality I put into it, the more effect I get out of it versus just being flat and unemotional. Mm -hmm. Can you give me an example of a call that's unemotional versus a call that's emotional? Sure. Mm -hmm. This would just be a pretty flat, unemotional call. Okay, this would be more emotional. This is unemotional. Okay, I'm going to call more toward the emotional side during the rut to get to get a response out of the bulls. Um, you know. There's there's all kinds of different sounds you can make with these calls. I, I mean, the, the elk language is 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 very diverse when when you've heard them a lot. Um, you know, one sound that I've heard in particular that uh, I found to be very effective by practicing at is what I just, for lack of a better term, I call it the Esther scream. And if I were to equate it to something that most people would be familiar with, it would be a monkey or a chimpanzee screaming you know, all upset and making it, having a fit about it. Um, and, and when I demonstrate it to people in my seminars, they actually give me a really funny look, but then I can actually put footage up of a real cow elk doing it, and then they become a believer. Um, very similar to uh, an emotional cow call, an emotional high-pitched cow call, but I'm just adding my, vo my voice and my vocal cords into it in my throat like this. Okay. Sometimes I'll do the call with my throat in there the whole time, and then other times I'll start with my throat in there, and then I'll take my vocal cords out of the call, and then I'll just blow with my, with my stomach and my tongue pressure. You, you can hear the difference. This is just my throat. Okay? Then I can, then I can take my throat out and add more tongue pressure and get this sound. Go from... Into. Okay, that's a call that I initially was very shy using just because, as you can tell, it's loud, it's, um, you know, it sounds very um, intrusive when you're out there in the woods to be making a sound like that. Um, 
But the more I've used it, you know, and had success with it, as they say, confident or success breeds confidence. Um, you know, the more success I have with with it, the more confident and the more frequently I use it, and and it is a dynamite call. Is that is that diaphragm specifically designed to make that call? It it, it is. This diaphragm is very good for making standard cow calls, but because of the stretch and and the latex thickness and and the overall design of the call, yes, it has that tonal quality. It's not just going to automatically make that sound when you put it in your mouth. Obviously, your half of the equation as well and how you blow the call, but it is designed with the proper uh, tonal quality and stretch to be able to make those sounds. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-